Okay, so now we have the inlays inlaid and we have the fretboard sanded all the way to, well, I went a bit overboard. So basically I did 120, 150, one, uh, 120, 150, uh, 240, 320, and 600, all the way to 800. Uh, yes, it is overkill, but it's it's a nice, nice, smooth fretboard and looks great. The inlays turned out very nice. There's a couple of cracks because Mother of Pearl is Mother of Pearl, and it tends to do that sometimes, but uh, nothing that we should really stress about all that much. The next step though is putting in frets. All right, so um, I actually had a comment a little while ago of whether I have some tips and tricks or any detailed videos on doing fretting. So I'm gonna show you the process of what I actually do when I'm fretting an instrument. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna open up the fret slots with a little triangular file just to give me better access. And I'm just going through each fret line or fret slot twice, opens it just enough to make fretting a little easier. Also at this point, if you haven't already, good time to check that uh, you don't have any dust in your fret slots. Now what I ended up going for with the fretboard is I have a 16 inch radius that goes onto a 20 inch. So a compound radius, if you will. So it's a bit flatter, higher up, but should make for comfortable playing. All right, sweet. Uh, let's get to it. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap in both ends. I'll start over here so you can see a bit better. I'll tap in both ends of the fret and then uh, smooth it out from the middle outwards. That ensures that, that the fret and its tangs sink in properly. Just snip off the excess. Something that helps out is having your frets, of course, bent to the correct radius. Uh, a little bit over is actually even better. Uh, mine aren't bent much, uh, so I'm just putting in a tiny bit of a curve for uh, just by doing it by hand because I don't have a fret bender, fret bending check. It's something that I still need to get. And usually when I buy frets, I buy them pre radius, but they didn't have bell brass in uh, pre radius frets. And it's really interesting as well hammering in bell brass, it has. A ring to it. You can, it sort of like uh, the gong, gong of a bell, funnily enough. So one end, the other end, and then smoothing out to the sides. You've seen me do this a million times already. All right, so. Now we have everything fretted, and what we're gonna do now is, we are going to answer the phone. So basically now, what needs to be done is uh, getting those fret ends nice and flush. But what I am gonna do as well is clean up the 
side dots, or the middles of the side dots, because now they're full of uh, glue instead of ebony dust, which is what I want in there. So, using this small little hand drill, well, well what, what do you call this? I don't know the name of it. Basically just using this small little drill, to drill everything out so I can fill them back up with ebony dust. Give you a close up to actually see what I'm doing. Should be able to see it from there. Sorry for the noise in the background, my dog's playing with toy. Just about to head out for a walk. And I'm pretty sure that very soon she's gonna come and tell me off. But yeah, basically, just cleaning these out enough so that I can get some glue and ebony dust in there so that they'll look that much better. And a bit more consistent. And it also makes sense to do this at this point because um, we need to use a leveling beam to basically sand down the ends of the frets so that they're flush with the um, fretboard edge. So at the same time, we might as well sand the uh, ebony dust and glue level two. All right, this is gonna be a bit tedious, but we'll get through it. Good help is some form of scalpel would probably be helpful in this. Because I can just put little bits Little drops of glue. It'll look pretty horrible for a little while, but it'll get better. Technically, I could do this the other way around where I put glue in the holes first, but um, I'm feeling I'll be able to get the dust in a bit deeper into the cavities if I do it this way. Because I can really make sure that I get dust in the hole before basically gluing it in place. And again, I'm leaning the entire base back a little bit so that I don't accidentally get glue on the top of my fretboard because that would suck. Especially at this point. Alrighty, so carrying on, now that the glue has dried, we're just going to use a leveling beam with 120 to get that flat.
Now at the same time, we're getting the ends of the frets sanded flush to the side of the fretboard. Alternatively, another good tool for this job is a fret leveling file. If you happen to have one. And then once we're done with one side, do the other side. And you'll hear the, di if you're using a file, you'll hear the difference once you're actually at the wood. Hear that? Okay, now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get in the bevels. So basically the edges of the uh, fretboard and the frets themselves. Because right now everything is kind of at a square and we want nice bevels on the sides of the frets so that they uh, feel nice to play. So I am gonna use, first I'm gonna use this Crimson Guitars fret and beveling tool. It's basically just a file that sits on the top of the fretboard, but it's angled and has a, uh, it looks like a square file at a corner at an edge so that uh, I can get a very nice bevel with a couple of swipes. Now, uh, the way that I usually do this is I would take, take the initial stuff down with the fret beveling well, you don't need to use one if you don't have one. You can also use a leveling beam to do the same thing and just doing that. But I'm gonna use a combination of both. So. Again, we're looking for basically the change in the sound when you start hitting the wood. Switching over to the leveling beam, holding it at an angle. You can hear how the sound has changed. Or we'll hear it on this side as well. I want to do just a little more, a couple of swipes. Like so. And then we'll finesse that edge once we actually get to uh, paint and whatnot. But for the time being, that's the uh, fret work done. Um, now it's just time to sand off all the old paint, then repaint this thing. And uh, then we'll start reaching the home stretch already. Sweet. This has now been uh, 
fully refinished and we're getting to the final stages. But what I'm gonna do, or what I like to do at this point is the edges of the fretboard are still fairly sharp. So I'm just gonna take some 320, like so, and I'm just gonna wrap it around my finger like that. And I'm gonna go along the edge of the fretboard here just to kind of get that little played in feel. Now, by doing this with my finger, I am literally getting into those frets right there. Feels a bit more comfortable to play when you don't have such sharp edges on your fretboard. And at the same time, I'm kind of polishing off, well not polishing off, and I'm just sanding the fret ends a little at the same time. All right, now, I need to do some fret work and for that we're going to actually mask off the fretboard again. And uh, yeah, get to it. In preparation for fret leveling, I have now checked that the neck is actually straight. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put masking tape on the side of each fret on both sides just to protect the fretboard a little bit. Burnishing alongside each fret with just my fingernails so we don't get any Anything catching. In the next phase, which would be not cool. Then what I am gonna do next is of course I need to see exactly how much I need to take off. So I'm just gonna use a Sharpie here to mark the tops of all the frets. This will allow me to keep track of how much material I need to take off and whether I'm taking things off flat or off flat. Okay, so this stage is actually a lot simpler than it may seem, or it is actually exactly as simple as it sounds. Um, gonna use a leveling beam and we're going to gently level the frets. Now we've ever marked all the frets out with uh, Sharpie, which shows us everything now in black. When we start sanding, we'll notice that it's taking away some of that black, of course. And your aim is to get everything looking uniform. Now if you've done your uh, fretting well enough, it should not take long for you to do this. Um, you don't wanna sand away all your frets either but you don't wanna have high spots. And then in between leveling, when you think you're done, go and check with a fret rocker, uh, which I don't have here right now. Um, basically a fret rocker, it has, it has some sides to it, I can't remember how many. And it sits over the top of three different frets and if it rocks, that means that that fret is high in comparison to the two others next to it. And your aim is to get everything not rocking at all. All right, so it's just repetition. And the main, main part here is that you do not press down at all. You take very, very gentle strokes, just like that. Currently I'm doing this with 240. Now from here I can see that there is a low spot here, here, and here, and somewhere over there. So I need to get all of that sorted out before I can move on to crowning. Just take your time, you're not in a rush.
All right, so next up, now that we have everything leveled, we're gonna mark these tops of the frets again. And now we're gonna get to crowning. So what that entails is taking a fret crowning file or a triangular file if you have one, but with a safe edge. So something that has been ground down so you don't damage the fretboard. Now, what we're gonna do is now we have a fairly fat, now we have a fairly fat line in the middle there and we're gonna aim to bring that to a point. So as small of a line as possible. So there's now a little bit of an angle and I'm slowly bringing that in. From both sides. Now what we're doing here essentially is we are creating the intonation point. And you want to have your intonation point always in the middle of the fret, of course. Getting there, slowly but surely. And this, this new fret file that I got is a freaking dream. All right, let me show you a close up so you'll actually see what I mean here. Okay, so see, now that is a fairly flat and thick line. That is a fairly flat and thick line there in the middle. And what we're aiming to do is bring it around to look more like this. Now we have a much smaller line going down the middle. I do need to fix that end there just a little bit, but yeah, you get the point. All right, so now that we have the frets leveled, crowned, the only thing that we need to do anymore is round off the edges, because now these are kind of sharp and we want to make them look a little bit nicer. Um, usually I would have a smaller triangular file to do this with a safe edge, but that is currently on loan with Jay, so I'm gonna try and do this with uh, the bigger one here. It shouldn't be that bad. All we're gonna do is just a couple of strokes and uh, that's usually more than enough just to kind of round over the edges. There. I'm gonna do this one as well. Well, I'm not gonna do all of them, but. There. Basically, all I'm doing is just eliminating all those sharp contact points for your fingers to hit. And uh, repeat the same process on both sides. And uh, then we're pretty much good to start the polishing process. And you know, the whole point is to not really take off huge amounts of material. And I'm doing this extremely lightly. Kind of letting, letting the file knock down these corners for me instead of trying to force it. Of course, the smaller file gives me a little bit more control, but this is actually going fairly well. It's also one of those things where it's like you could really take your time and make really good looking, beautiful fret ends all rounded and nice, but this bigger file is not the tool for that job. And rounding off the ed rounding off the ends here is also more a matter of player comfort than anything else. The fact that they look nice is, of course, an added bonus. Now, when you're doing the other side, don't try and go that way. It's just not gonna work out the same way. Just flip the instrument over and do the other side. And again, just take your time. Last thing you want is to put in all the time and effort to do fret work and then 
not do your fret ends properly. And be careful that when you're doing this that you don't knock onto your finish. That would also not be great. Which is why you don't want to apply too much pressure either. Lightly taking away with as many digits on the file as possible so you have even more control. All right, and then I'm gonna do the other side and we're gonna come back for polishing. Now the very first order of business really when we get to polishing is um, we've now leveled the frets and we've gone this way. So technically they're scratch, well technically, there are scratches going now this way, especially so if you have used a fret leveling file, you might have even deeper scratches in there. So um, the big deal about that might not be as noticeable on a bass, but specifically on guitars, or I should say, especially on guitars, you will feel it if you're trying to bend the strings and you have grooves going this way, you're gonna go like a or you're gonna get a sort of like scratching sound because you're hitting those divots with the string. The bass, you'll get that same sort of response. It won't feel as nice. So to counteract that, we're gonna use some 320 and we're gonna start off by sanding away all the, well, coarser sandpaper marks. And while we're doing this, we are also at the same time just ever so gently rounding over the very top of the fret because now it's at a very sharp point. When you start playing that bloink, when you start playing, that point is going to get mushed down because it's going to get worn down and it might end up with a sort of more of a plateau. Now, if it's rounder, you'll have a very solid contact point, but it'll wear down a bit more evenly, I should say or in theory at least. And while I'm doing this, I am sanding, let's see what will be, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. While I am sanding, and very lightly, I might add, I'm also gonna sand the edges. Now this is where we have previously used the file to create the crown. And then the fret ends as well. We can just do those like this to get those nice. The fret ends polish up pretty well just by sanding along the edge like this. Once again, if you've done all your fretting work very well or well enough, you should not have too much stuff to get rid of at this point. And always, always use a sort of backlight to check your work up against. Because you'll see the light reflect off of the scratches. So you'll know what you need to take care of still. You know what? I actually really like working on uh, brass frets. These are really nice. All right, I'm gonna keep at it. We'll come back with some more polishing. Okay, so next up what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some fret polishing rubbers. <laughs> First, we're gonna go very coarse. Then we are gonna do coarse, then we're gonna do medium, then we're gonna do fine, and then we're gonna do super fine. And basically, all we're gonna be doing is this. Then moving on to the next grit. Then moving on to the next grit. Then moving on to the next grit. And then moving on to the last grit. 
Now all we're gonna do is repeat that 23 times, but I'll show you the difference that that makes. Not only does this make playing a hell of a lot nicer, it also looks fantastic. Let's see if I can get that, catch that on camera somehow. There we go. Basically what we're looking for is pretty much as close to a mirror shine as we can get. That's the one that we're looking at. And these two on the sides have not been done. If I block the light, see my hand move past there. So that is what we're looking for. I think I'm gonna time lapse this. That's two grits done. Um, my hand is cramping pretty bad. So I'm gonna go take the dog out and come back, do the rest. Um, good thing to point out, don't ever wipe like this with your hand because it is grit after all, much like sandpaper. So you will be at a risk of damaging your finish. So have a brush handy, much better for this sort of stuff. All right. Okay, so after all the work is done, this is essentially what the finished product looks like. So thank you very much for checking out this video. Be sure to hit like, comment down below, and that little bell icon, that helps so much. So go ahead and smash that button. See you guys next week. Bye.